Let me welcome you to our next segment of our devotional journey through Psalm 16. Today we're going to be in verse 8. It says, I've set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. We saw in verse 7 that David kind of turned a corner as we've been following him along in this internal journey that he's on. As he's gone from crying out to God to, to praising him and worshiping him. This is because he's been contemplating who God is and his own personal dedication and statement of faith to the Lord. This journey takes another step forward in verse 8 as he begins looking forward to the future and what this dedication to God means for him as he thinks about times that are yet to come. It appears that as David faces the, the troubling situation in the present, he, he remembers back to who God is and what God has done, and it assures him in the present circumstance, and it causes David to have a sincere confidence about the future. I, I think this is the overall flavor of this verse, of verse 8. It, it's a statement of confidence. Listen to it again with that mindset. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Do you hear the confidence in that statement? Well, first I want us to notice that the, the psalmist's confidence comes from the right source. By now, you should be wondering, when you see the word Lord in the verse, which Lord is it? Is it Yahweh or, or Adonai? And yes, it is again the, the Tetragrammaton. <laughs> God's personal name. David is repeating once more exactly who he's referring to. Now, this may be something we want to think about for a moment. Uh, A.W. Tozer said, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. In our day, the word God can be a very generic term, and it can mean almost anything. So exercise one today is to, is to try to write a sentence or, or two, maybe even a short paragraph, articulating this most important thing about you. When you say God, what comes to your mind? Also, I want to encourage you to decide on a way to identify or identify who it is you're talking about when you say God. In the scripture, God is sometimes called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as an identifier as to exactly who this person is speaking of when he talks about God. David here uses those uh, four Hebrew letters that we recognize as God's name. People have added vowels to those letters to pronounce it Yahweh. And this is another clear identifier of who we're talking about. Others use the word Jehovah, which comes from combining the two different Lord words, Yahweh and Adonai, putting them together, taking the tetragrammaton, those first letters that are only consonants, and then taking the vowels from the word Adonai and putting them together and then translating it into English to come up with the word Jehovah. This may be an unclear identifier in our day because it may people think you're, talk, you're a Jehovah's Witness or talking about the Jehovah Witnesses who mean something very different when they say God than biblical Christians do. I personally sometimes like using the identifier, the God of the Bible. I think that's clear. Or the triune God referencing the uniqueness of the Trinity that, that makes it very clear about who I'm talking about. You could use the term the God of Christianity, but Christianity is another one of those words that can mean an awful lot of different things in our day and our time. At any rate, this is a good exercise because it helps us think about what we mean when we use the word God. And spending time identifying that is certainly a worthwhile effort. David's statement is, I have set the Lord always before me, always. This is what I've done in the past. This is what I'm doing now. And this is what I plan to do in the future, to set the Lord before me. He's saying that God is always in front of him, that he can't view anything in his path without looking at the Lord. Imagine if you had a pair of glasses uh, that you need to wear in order to see. And these glasses had a, a strange blue tint to them, let's say. 
Well, everything that you looked at would then have a similar blue hue to it. Everything would be affected by what you set before your eyes. David is saying everything he views is through the lenses of God, who he is, what he wants, his abilities, and his character. Then he goes on to explain how that colors what he sees. He talks about this in this verse and in the next as well, as he displays this confidence as he looks at the world through God and what he finds in the Lord. This verse ends with another phrase showing God's place of prominence in David's life. We're probably somewhat familiar with the idea of how being on someone's right side is a place of importance. We use the phrase commonly, he is my right-hand man, to describe someone who's very important to us, especially to our success or they've been some type, somehow a benefit to our life. So imagine realizing God is my right-hand man. How would that influence how you lived life? David said here that he would not be shaken. That is, he wouldn't be moved or dislodged or slipped down. The same sentiment is found in the New Testament as well. Paul said it this way in Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? 1 John 4, 4 states it this way. Little children... You are from God and have overcome them for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses 17 again tells us, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God, not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. I hope you're able to experience this same type of confidence in your life. As you remember God is near, that you keep him in front of you, that you look at the, all the world through him, through his abilities, through his character, through his love, through his faithfulness to you. And, and it gives you confidence to face today what is in your path and you're prepared for tomorrow as well. May God bless you. Until next time, amen.